a brand new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast is about to begin. It's time to be inspired by simple and actionable solutions for you and your business. If you're an established entrepreneur or just laying down the first brick of your future empire, the mantra is the same. We will flip any failure into a positive and use it to our advantage. This show is all about turning coal into diamonds. With the right plan and mindset, anything is possible. I'm Jennifer John, your host, business coach, and founder of Best Planner Ever. And I'm here to help you achieve all your ambitious goals. Success is closer than you think. Let's do this. Hey, hey, welcome to another episode of the Happy Productive Podcast. I know you're going to love my guest today. Her name is Miss Jody Lasky. She is an accomplished entrepreneur, coach, and speaker, and also the founder of The Introvert Founder, which I am going to find all about today because I really want to know a little bit more about this. But first, Miss Jody, welcome to the show. Thank you. Excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Would you just give us a little bit of background on who is Jody and tell us a little bit of your story? Sure. As you said, uh, I am a multi entrepreneur. <laughs> I get the bug every few years for a new business, and and then I would go back to WT to regular work, and then I would go off my own again. And I finally just accepted that I am meant to be an entrepreneur, and I stopped fighting it quite so much and embraced it. And now I've been an entrepreneur with a few different companies for oh about 15 years now. A lot of government sector work. I supported the army for a while, developed a really super high tech laser tag system for training soldiers. And then when I shut that business down, went into a regular traditional tech startup, learned the hard way just how different tech is from, from government. And then while I was doing that, found myself coaching, like going to networking events, meeting people and just my, my nature, I can't help but ask questions and give my opinion and make suggestions. And, and so sort of fell into coaching and mentoring, mm -hmm. slowed that down a lot during the pandemic and recently relaunched. Oh, fabulous. And so what is the introvert founder? I'm just really curious about this. I am the introvert founder. Um, uh, okay. Contrary to, to what a lot of people think, introversion is not shyness. Um, mm. But I am an introvert and I am a founder and I work with a lot of introverts and I would say non-standard brains mm -hmm. to include neurodiverse people. I also have ADHD and as a general rule, like attracts like. So I have a lot of clients who are either neurodiverse or introverts or both and trying to make our way in the, in the leadership or, or business world with fewer people to model ourselves out after. Gotcha. And I have not heard the term neurodiverse. Tell me a little bit about that because it sounds really, actually, it sounds really fascinating. It's, it's kind of a big overall term for people who either have ADHD or autism or other things where our brains are just not really the standard. The opposite is neurotypical. So mm -hmm. not the, not the neurotypical, we're the neurodiverse. A lot of us may have executive function issues. We may have attention issues, but we also tend to be very creative. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, Pros and cons to, to neurotypicality, pros and cons to neurodiversity. And, and I try to help those who are neurodiverse make their way in this world that's not always so friendly. Nice. Oh my goodness. Well, I love the term. It sounds fabulous. It's like, wow, whatever that is, I want some of it. So <laughs> I definitely love the term. Talk to me a little bit about being an introvert because I too am an introvert and I would just love for you to share your experience of, do you feel like that has been an asset? Do you feel like it's held you back? Like where, how do you feel about being an introvert? How do I feel about it? I, I have no problem with it. I've embraced it. I have learned to accept those elements of myself. I think the, the biggest difficulty for an introvert is trying to not be one. Mm -hmm. So introverts, we tend to be very in our heads. We process internally. 
information actually goes through our brain using a different path that's slightly longer. So we do take an extra second or two to respond to questions. We're not shy. We just need to recharge differently. And introverts, as a general rule, we hate small talk, partly because you know, the information is going to go slower. So let's give us something that will excite us, get get a little more dopamine going. So the biggest thing, especially for a business owner, a founder who is an introvert to acknowledge is an extrovert going out and going to all the networking events that gives them energy. It's great for them to do as long as they're still getting their work done. We need to look at our energy levels. If we need to go home and rest so that we can bring our best selves to work the next day, then that is a better use of our energy. And we need to be more careful with which networking events we go to. Mm -hmm. Don't just go because, you know, one person's going to be there or you've heard great things about it or it's something to do tonight. Mm -hmm. Go because there is a specific reason that you are giving up energy for this because it will affect you the next day. Mm -hmm. It's, It's kind of like an energy hangover. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting that you say this because like the idea of going to a networking event, I would rather have a root canal than go to a networking event. Like it is probably my least favorite thing. I will do any other marketing strategy in my business (laughs) so that I never have to go to a networking event. Now, to get up on a stage in front of thousands of people and speak, not a problem. Like I could do that all day long, feel very at home. That energizes me. Mm -hmm. But to like walk into a room of people I don't know, and then have to make like conversation with them. It's just like, it just won't happen. Yeah. And that's, and you know that, and you have embraced that part of yourself. And that is fantastic. And that is what you should be doing. Unfortunately, introversion sort of has a really bad rap Mm -hmm. in this country All pre-COVID stats, I would love to see updated studies, but pre-COVID, they would say that two-thirds of Americans are extroverts and one-third are introverts. 50 years ago, it was 50-50. I believe believe that at that time, pre-COVID, a lot of people were forcing themselves to try to be extroverts and paying for it on the back end. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people came out of COVID going, wow, that takes a lot more out of me than it used to. No, you just spent a few years actually having more normalized energy. And now you recognize that it doesn't have to be that way. And there's the reality that introversion and extroversion aren't necessarily a fixed binary, that there are ambiverts, and that it is a spectrum. So very few people are total, complete one or the other all of the time. Got it. And so when you work with a business owner and you're coaching them and they come to you and they have these things going on where it's just like, I'm not really able to achieve the level of success or the results that I'm really trying to get to. Like what process do you use to go through to kind of help them figure out, well, you're kind of out of alignment over here, or maybe you have some neurodiversity going on. Like, you know, how does somebody kind of start to figure out like what's going on with me of why I can't really perform at the level I'd like to perform at? So the very first thing I do with my clients is have them figure out where they want to be in five years. And I don't think of that as goals. Five years to me is too long, far out to look at goals. Mm -hmm. I look at dreams. Mm -hmm. Like if you can, if you have your dream life in five years, what does that look like? And then to have that in five years, where do you have to be in three years? And then we back up to the one year goal and break that down into quarters. And what is it you really need to get done and actually focus on the most important things broken down to the week on a week by week basis. You know, we all have these to-do lists that are miles and miles long. Mm -hmm. And we look at them and we get overwhelmed and we just start picking stuff. I have a process that I use with my clients based on agile software development where you look at every Saturday, you look at everything on your to-do list and you prioritize And you rank how much time or how difficult it will be, how much energy, all of those things. But like, is it a a small, medium, a large or an extra large? So not getting down to, well, I have 30 minutes on this day and 25, not just, just big chunks, like overarching. 
And then on Sunday, you look at your calendar and you say, well, I've got time for a couple of smalls and I could do a medium and maybe two larges. And you look at your top priorities in those categories and that's your to-do list for the week. Mm-hmm. And then you, you write those down and you don't even look at the rest of the list. And when the good idea fairy pops up during the week, you add it to the other list that you evaluate again on Saturday. So you are only focused on what you said on Sunday, you had the time and energy to do. Wow, that is super powerful. And what kind of shifts do you see in your clients when they start to use this kind of a method? I come from software, so I love this. Um, what this kind of a methodology in you know planning their week, but also executing. Levels of overwhelm go down. If you're looking at a two-page to-do list, you're going to get overwhelmed. Even if you say, well, I only have to do these, these four, if you see that whole list, you're going to be overwhelmed. And you're going to be tempted to like ignore that because something else feels more interesting. The rest of it doesn't exist. You try to break stuff down as much as you can to have as many small things to give you more flexibility. And there's software out there that helps with all that and, and so on. But it's really going from this feeling of overwhelm and I didn't finish my to-do list today. So now all that stuff shifts to tomorrow. And now I have two days worth of to-do lists to do in a day. It's not going to happen. If Mm -hmm. it was too much to do in one, one day, it's definitely too much to do double. And part of it is paying attention, Mm -hmm. really paying attention. Once you're, you're going down this methodology, you see where your time wastes are. You see whether they are time wastes or things you just didn't realize you were doing, but that are important. Yeah. Like leaving time to talk to your employees. Like Mm -hmm. we we can get very focused in marking off the to-do list, but we forget to put people on our to-do list unless we need something for them. But if you are building a business and you have people working for you, you have to make time. So you start to see all of those other things, where your time is going how you're using it, whether it's effective, Mm -hmm. and adjust accordingly. And now you're always focused on the most important things on the to-do list. Oh, I love this so much. And for those of you who are listening and you use my planner, those most important things are your A tasks. Those are the things that it's like, get on my comfort zone, do something today to move that needle forward. It's interesting though, you're right. Like, so we we just get overwhelmed when we see this two page to-do list of so many things. I do this in my Asana. We use Asana for our project management in-house. And I have a, a column on my Asana board called my, called my think tank slash do later. And because I think as entrepreneurs, at least most of us, we get all these ideas all the time, just like idea, idea, idea. And if we act on them, it kind of like derails the week because we can just get really distracted and and pulled in 12 directions. And so I will put my those grandiose ideas in that think tank and I just let it sit there. And sure as hell, like, you know, I check it. I don't check it that often, but maybe like once a month, I go check it. And if it's a good idea, it will still be a good idea. But it's shocking how many things I just say, delete. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> go oh, back that, and that revisit. That good idea, Fairy, you know, when, when she's on it, you know, the, the, the ideas are flowing, but it doesn't mean they're good ideas. But when we have the adrenaline or the dopamine from having right. that new idea, we think it's brilliant. Yeah. But having your separate board to, to right. track it, ha- saying, I can add it to the to-do list and prioritize yes. on the weekend, not jumping on it immediately gives right. it that cooling time. Right. Right. I found that to be just such a helpful thing that when the idea comes, I pop it in this little hold place. If it's really going to be a good idea, it will still be a good idea. And it will sit there and it will like stand the test of time. But for all of those other ones that are like, oh, it seemed a good idea at time. But you know, then this happened and that happened. And now it's not necessary, or we automated or we figured out a way around it or whatever. It is I don't even know how much time it saved me, but of just like just sitting and just waiting a little bit before, because I love to just jump in and take action and to just give that a little space to breathe can be such a huge time saver because yeah, it's just like, ah, maybe not. Yeah. And then some ideas you'll find, at least I find, I'll put it on the list. It seems brilliant. And then I'm like, eh, maybe not. And I get rid of it. 
Yeah. And then I have it again. And if the idea keeps coming to me, that's the other thing to, to think about. Like, okay, maybe one of my businesses was that, that way. I literally, I had the idea. I kept waiting for someone else to do it. You go talk uh, to a VC. One of the questions they'll always ask is, why are you the person to do it? And my answer was always like mentally, I'm not like, there are plenty of other people who can do this better than I can. And I kept waiting and I kept waiting and I kept waiting and people were coming close but didn't quite have the model right. And I was finally like, all right, I at least have to try it. <laughs> because at a certain point in time, if the idea keeps coming to you, there's a reason for it. Yeah, agree completely. I feel like sometimes when I've heard it three times, like that's my magic number. It's like uh, that third time, I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I'm listening. I hear you. <laughs> I probably okay, need to do universe. something. Yep. Okay, universe. I probably need to do something with this one a little bit faster. Yeah. Very nice. So Jody, tell us a little bit about what would you say is like a business lesson that you had to learn the hard way? Oh, so many. <laughs> I think the biggest one, and this goes to introversion, and it also goes to this tech startup world in general, is people say a lot of things. And they may mean it at the time, but that doesn't mean they actually mean it. Um, and then the second one was being really careful about the networking events you go to. Like look mm. past the hype because the ones that are best hyped, that just means they have a good marketer behind them. Unless you are going to learn about marketing, the marketing behind it doesn't matter. Make sure it's truly a good use of your time. I, I mentioned to you earlier, I'm in the DC area which does not have a fantastic startup scene like New York City does. And I used to go to New York a lot when I had my tech startup for that reason. And I would see the same people at events over and over again. And I'd ask them what they'd done since the last time. And I would get a list of other events they went to. Okay, but when are you actually doing the work? Mm. Building a business, there, there's a lot of elements, especially if you're in a service business and you're running a service and, and providing a service to customers and also trying to build your business, you have two things you're doing at the same time. And finding that balance is really difficult. So true. So true. That is awesome. Awesome advice. I absolutely love it. So Jody, if people want to find out a little bit more about you, where can they find you? Introvertfounder.com. That's the easiest place. I'm also on LinkedIn, but introvertfounder.com will get you anything you might need. And for your listeners, if they go to introvertfounder.com slash happy, they will be able to download my agile productivity framework, exactly what I work, walk my clients through, what to do each day, what to do on the weekends to really be able to start implementing this program and not be so overwhelmed by the to-do list. Oh, I love that. All right, you guys. So head on over to Jody's website. We will put the link in our show notes as well. Grab that agile furry mark. I absolutely love it. I'm going to go over there and grab my copy right now, Jody. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I really, really appreciate it. And gosh, guys, I think that's it. I think that's it for today. <laughs> Jody, Jody and I were chatting a little bit before the show. And I think we both had a hell of a Monday. And I think, uh, it's like, okay, <laughs> we've made it through the day, Jody. Now we hopefully did. we can we can shut down and have a nice, uh, nice rest of our evening. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks, Jennifer Dong. You're so welcome. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Get out there and have a happy, productive day. Bye, y'all. I hope you found today's episode of the Happy Productive Podcast inspiring. Every successful business is formed by a set of small, consistent, and attainable steps. If you want to learn more, come visit us at jenniferdawncoaching.com to take your next step and learn how to meet your business goals. On our website, you're going to find free resources along with links to the life-changing coaching programs that have transformed the lives of so many of our clients, including the Coaching Academy and our Unbreakable Retreats. Many of them started their journey by listening to this podcast. That's it. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode. Mm -hmm.